Okay, magnetic fields checkpoint four, forces on uh, wires carrying current through magnetic fields. This is the mark scheme. So here's our first question. We've got a classic demonstration here. We've got a, a wire carrying a current. First thing we need to notice is that the battery is this way around, so the current is going away from us in this wire, going in this direction. Um, the magnetic field is going down from north to south. And the first thing that asks us is for an arrow showing the direction of the force. So you need to get your left hand, point your first finger down without changing that, make your second finger point away from you, and you should end up with a force. Uh, you should end up with a force in this direction. So make sure you do that. A lot of people seem to miss out that question. Level that F. So using this information, work out the size of the force. This is quite a hard demonstration to get to work sometimes. Um, when you've got a strong magnetic field. Uh, so we're on the equation F equals G I L. When you look at that equation, you'll notice there's no I in this data. So the first thing we need to do is to notice that we've got a resistance and we've got a potential difference. So the first thing we need to do is I equals V over R is 2 over 0 0.4. So we'll get 5 amps of current flowing through this uh, wire. So we get that the uh, flux density is 0 0.08 Tesla times the current of 5 amps times the length here is 60 millimeters, so 60 times 10 to minus 3. Now put down the calculator, you'll find the force is only 0.024 newtons. So you'll see that's quite hard to demonstrate sometimes, and you've got a strong magnet to make that work. Um, which leads us on to an experiment we've probably done. So we've now got a um, wire carrying the current between the poles of a magnet, and the magnet is rested on a top pan balance. Um, what I would normally do is to tear the balance, but in this question, they haven't bothered to change this, so we're weighing the magnets in the first place. But then, as we put a current through the wire, the reading goes from 201.32 up to 202.86. So, the first part of the question is just to understand the principle of the experiment. Why is the uh, reading on the balance increasing? Uh, this is quite crucial to understand. You need to understand that there is a force upwards on the wire, which we can find by the left hand rule and then by Newton's third law there must be a force down on the magnets. So the magnets seem to get heavier. Obviously the actual weight of the magnets isn't changing, but it's as if somebody's pushing down on these magnets, which makes them seem to get heavier. So to state the direction of the current flow, well again this is left hand rule. But what you need to understand is that if the force is going to be up on the wire Okay, then if you, again, if you do your left hand, you'll notice that the field is going this way, you need the force to be this way, you should end up with the current flowing in this direction. So the answer is uh, right to left, uh, because the force is up, and then by the left hand rule. Okay, you can write a bit more explanation, but those are the two points. Okay, so the last, last part of this is getting uh, numerical. So we've got our length of the wire is 60 millimetres, uh, we've given us a current of 5 amps and we need to work out the flux density so we've got F equals B I L again but once again this is not a simple equation because we haven't got the force we've got a change in uh, weight on the balance so the force is the 202.86 grams take away the weight which is actually the weight of the magnets in the first place 202.3 and that, of course, is only a mass difference, so that's in grams. So then we need to multiply it by, three, uh, by G to get a weight, but we also need to divide it by 1,000 to turn it into kilograms. Okay, so a little bit tricky there. If you do all that, um, then you'll find that you get the weight to be near enough 1.5 times 10 to minus 3 uh, newtons. So then we can go back to this equation. And I've got 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. If I divide that by the current, which is 5, times the length, which is 60 times 10 to the minus 3, 
then that gives us the flux density of 0 0.05 0 0.05 tesla. Okay, so there's my answer there. Okay, what does this look like as a graph? Well, this graph is based around the principle of f equals bil, so it might be tempting to think f is proportional to i, and therefore we've got a proportional graph, but this is the extra force, okay, this is kind of like a delta f really on this uh, graph, because it's already starting at 202, 201.32 here, so it will go up in a straight line, from somewhere slightly different on the graph, but up in a straight line, but not proportional relationship. If we tear the balance at the start, then we would get a proportional relationship. Okay, question three. So the units, nice straightforward uh, mark. Only one mark in the photo for all four things, but still, nice easy one. So we've got Newton, we've got the amp, we've got the Tesla, and we've got the meter. Okay, state the condition under which the equation applies, um, but it only applies when the uh, direction of the flux B is, is perpendicular, perpendicular to the current. Okay, so here's another just slightly tricky variation on a focus BIL. We've got this uh, wire here carrying the current through a magnetic field. We're going to try to make this wire hover. Um, to do that, then we need the force upwards, the BIL force, to be equal to the force downwards, the weight mg. So our basic principle for this experiment is mg equals BIL. Um, but they've only given us a length here in terms of L, so we have to be a little bit careful. To get the mass, the well, mass is density times volume, um, so this becomes density times volume times G. And then we need to see that the volume is the length times the area, so this becomes rho L A G um, equals B L. Okay, the clever thing then is you notice that the L's will cancel out, so it doesn't matter how long this wire is, as long as it's in the magnetic field. Um, and then we can work out the um, flux density, so B equals rho a g over m i so that gives us 8.9 times 10 to the 3 still got a chapter we've got to avoid here this is 25 millimeters squared so 25 times 20 minus 3 squared times 9.8 divided by 65 and we can to make this thing work um, and that gives you a flux density of 0 0.84 tesla they draw an arrow on the diagram to show the um, direction which the magnetic field should be applied while the current is going uh, this way. The force needs to be going that way. So again, if you get your left hand and you point your thumb upwards and your second finger up to the right there, then you should get a field in this direction. Okay. So as far as the direction of the magnetic field, the flux density must be going away from it. Okay, and then just a few multiple choice questions. Actually, some quite tricky ones these are. Um, so we've got um, a coil here inside the magnetic field. Um, if we just do the whole thing first, rather than just looking at the possible answers, if you use your left hand rule again, you should find that in this side here, the flux, so the first thing is going to the the current's going away from you, that's all going up, so that makes the force be going down away from you, so on this side there's a force going down, on this side there's a force coming up, because the current's going the other way, on these two sides the, um, there is no force because the current is parallel to the wire, so it's not cutting through the flux. Um, so there are no forces on B on SP and QL, I'll just show that there are. There are no forces on B, P3 and RS, this is the correct answer. Um, because the current is parallel to the direction of the field. SP and QL tend to attract each other, and P3 and RS tend to attract each other. This is a little bit of a red herring, really. Um, but if we get, forget about this magnetic field, forget that wasn't there, we will just have the current in parallel conductors. 
they don't remember if they go in opposite directions and they actually repel. Although know, really that would be a very strange question if one of those was the answer. Okay, this one again, quite a lot of work to do here for your um, multiple choice mark. So this is another F equals B L question. So the first thing we've got to do is work out the current. So we get I equals F over B L. So the force is 30 times 10 to minus 3. Um, the flux density is 20 times 10 to minus 3 times the length of 0 0.3. That will give you a current of 5 amps, so we've narrowed it down to C or D, so not A or B. Then again, you need to use your left hand rule. So the field is going this way, it tells us that the force is downwards. And um, again, if you use your left hand, then you should find out that you end up with the current going away from you, so it's going from Q to P, like which is going to D. Okay, last again, another quite tricky question, really, slightly unusual. Um, so we've got another um, coil in a field, but you'll notice this is a slightly different arrangement to the first one. So the forces in the two vertical sides are equal and opposite. If you work this out, this one's cutting through the field, you get a force in that direction. The current is anything different in this direction, so you get a force in this one. So A is the most straightforward answer. These are not creating a couple because these are both acting through the axis of rotation. So you can see that B is wrong. No forces act on horizontal sides, it's looks a bit like the previous question, but in fact, you'll notice that these line, this current is cutting through the flux. So there is a force on the top of this one. Um, in this case, I think that force is downwards if you work it out. And this one is upwards. So that's not correct. If the coil is turned to a small angle, then it would make position we know because as soon as it gets to say a position like this, if they rotate it slightly from there, these two forces will create a couple and it will start to rotate.